we are here to celebrate the work of Anthony Ricciardi, who is a Toronto born and raised artist. Yes. So good to have you here. It's great to be here. It's funny though, because even though you, you, went, you grew up here in Toronto, and even though you're an artist now, nobody would have known that when you headed down south to go to school on a baseball scholarship. Yes, it's definitely an interesting road. So I'm, yeah, like you said, born and raised in Toronto and decided to go down south to Alabama State University to play baseball. I was offered a Division I op opportunity and nice. had to take it. So that, that experience in itself was incredible and I had, had the opportunity to study finance while I was down there. So it was a little bit of a different road to get to art because finance background, baseball, and now I'm painting. So it's definitely, um, definitely been exciting. Now you say now you're painting, but the truth is you've probably always been painting. Right? I have, I have. Um, since before I can remember, um, my uncle was an artist, my uncle Fab. And from when I was as little as I can remember, we used to draw, paint, go to the art galleries, my dad and I, my uncle and I, and definitely was brought up through art with arts, which was, which was incredible. So. I think the def different layers, the baseball, the finance, definitely come through in my paintings today where I've taken on more of a full role painting every day and night. And I would say, looking at your artwork, there are so many layers to your artwork as well. Yeah, um, that's definitely one thing that I, I try to do. I, I caught, somebody that's looking at this painting sees an astronaut here, but up close you can see the different layers to it. There's script in the background, which is also part of the poetry and the lyrics that my uncle wrote and the imagery I always try to take something take something and see okay it's a recognizable image with an abstract background and I think what's interesting why I have to layer so much is being colorblind um, I have to he's an artist and he's colorblind what yes yeah, so I have the I can see the color when I'm I see the bottle and I can put it on the canvas but it's definitely difficult when colors start blending so what I, I like to do is carve into the background because that initial color that I put down, I know what it was. So I know I used the yellow in the background. Now when I blend different colors together, it, it does get tough, but I carve through to see the, see the story that I'm trying to tell and create that depth. And that's how you remember. And that's how I remember. So I don't understand why you would put script. I don't know if you can get super close here, but if you look really closely, you can see that there, are, there is writing and script behind here, but you've yeah. covered it up. Why do you cover it up? So I, I do a little bit of both. It's the reason I cover it up because I want to keep the main interest and main direction of the painting on the astronaut. But the script is um, subconsciously, when I started doing the script, it was remembering back to my uncle's poems. Uh, my uncle unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago, but remembering back to his poems and the lyrics that I wrote with him and by myself. So I tell the story that I want to say before I even know what the main image is going to go here. So I, I'll tell the story that I'm trying to say, and it's all real words I, um, I'm scripting through, and then I, then I create the painting. And sometimes ah. I, don't, I truly don't know what's going to go there until I'm done the painting, done the abstract piece, and I say, okay, this is an astronaut. And this, this one specifically, because we have it here, is when thinking back to when we're kids and we have ideas on what we want to be when we're older, we always say we want to be something fun. We want to be something incredible, like an astronaut or something larger than life. And, I, and now as we get older, we're... Here it is. This is. I became an astronaut in my own sense because I was able to portray it through my art. So interesting. I don't think I've ever heard somebody's process yeah. quite that way. And uh, so behind us here, the recognizable element is this beautiful dress that's yeah. on a dressmaker. So I think with this one here specifically is the whole creativity process to creating a dress, right? When a dress starts out similar to my art, it's just a blank canvas and that's just blank material, fabric. And it's with the designer who's able to come in and create different elements to it, add the bow, add the structuring um, to the shoulders or the dress or the flow that becomes a beautiful dress. And I want to show it in a, a little bit of an a abstract way to show the beautiful process to create a, such an, a crazy ending. And that's mm -hmm. why I think that the, the dress there is definitely the creative spin plus the the art of making something. It's like the theory of gestalt. The, the, the sum is, is greater than, the, the end is greater than the sum of its parts, right? Yes. There's so much more to address yes, and than you, what you see. Yeah. And this one, what is this? Yeah, so this is, the key came to me, um, one of my uncle's um, poems was Let Me In. And when I was reading it initially, I thought I had done the background and I didn't know what to, to do here, but 
let me in is this is the key to success. And we're trying to push through and trying to truly get to where we want to go in life. I can see and the scripting in, yep. the in behind here. If you look really closely, you can see the scripting. Yeah, so the key here, and I want to do a vintage key because it it's always about being what, what we can take from the old and bring to the new. So I wanted the, the more modern spin of the abstract feel with the vintage key and having it drip and having it um, a little bit on the messier side, which is just my style of brush stroke. But I think that was, it was very important to me to do something like this and let me in, it's the key to success and I, I wanna continue to push through those doors and boundaries. And I, as you were saying earlier, you kind of scrape through some of the top layers yeah. to help you see the colors underneath, is that right? Yep, so that, that's initially how the, the scraping came because I knew, I knew I put yellow there, but now there's three or four different colors over it, so it's changed the shade of it. So now I can scrape through to what it was dry and I go, I want some yellow in the painting and I, I scrape through and here you can see life and love here. So there's different, different things that I like writing in there that really mean a lot to me. When you are looking at your paintings, being colorblind, yeah. do you get as much enjoyment out of the mix of colors and textures that you see like we do? Do you feel like you're getting I, enough out of it? I think due to the depth and the, the carving aspect of it, I do. Um, there's, it's often time I come out with a painting and show my fiance or my parents, I say, hey, this is a great yellow painting out here. <laughs> no, it's green and orange, but it's not yellow at all because it's changed colors. But to me, I wouldn't finish a painting unless I absolutely am 100% happy with it. So although I can't see the final product of the color, I knew what the intent was and, the, and that's why I carved back to try to get back to that intent. So it's, it's definitely an interesting process. Fascinating. And you're right. The important thing is that you like what you've created. Uh, we want to like it too. Now you sign it Rich, your name isn't actually spelled with a C-H. No, so it's Ricciardi, and in Italian, the C and the I make the ch sound. So everybody was always asking me, and um, as I played baseball growing up, everybody called me Rich, Rich. It's just an easier name to call on, on, the, on the sports field. So <laughs> I said, I'm going to go with Rich, and that's, that's what I sign off as my, um, my signature every time. That's so great, and it's yeah. a good reminder that that's how we pronounce it too, Ricciardi. Yeah. <laughs> What's next for you? Where can we see your work and how can we buy it? Yeah, so on my website, um, richardipaints.com. I go Richardi Paints with everything. And also, I'm gonna have a show at the end of May this year. So uh, all the details will be on the website. And contacting me directly. I, I'm doing, definitely, I've had my first condo placement in the lobby of the new Concord 8X um, Opus condo in North York, which is definitely exciting. I did a, a large seven foot by four and a half foot piece there, which is very exciting. And yeah, just reach out to me on Instagram, Twitter, my email's there as well, and happy to discuss and see how we can create paintings. Wouldn't that be fantastic? Yeah. I totally see this in a nice, nice big condo nice, wall. Yeah. Any of these. Thank you so much for Great, being here you. today. So if you want to be inspired, here's a guy who's painting and he's colorblind. And doesn't stop him at all. <laughs> And this is now what you do, you're not a baseball player? Well, I, I still have a, my baseball school, Top Pitcher. So I, I started a school for kids from nine to 14. It's just all my stuff's on toppitcher.com. And I, now I, I'm giving back through, through pitching lessons in Toronto. And, Brilliant. Yeah. But this is your, this this, is your job now. This is, this is what I love. He's an artist. <laughs> Ricciardi Paints, that's R-I-C-C-I-A-R-D-I -I -I paints.com. Check out his work. And now check out these events in your community. Good job.